Okay, in this clip I want to explain a few things that I've done. Earlier I showed you how to cut these out. I was using these. Of course it worked really well. The only problem you have is it leaves a little burr. And I showed you earlier how to solve that. I didn't show you what. I'm just using a nail. I'm taking and just spin it around there and push that burr down. That way the bottom and top will seat good together. Otherwise, they won't. That's just what I wanted to show you there. You could take a hole saw, which I have a hole kit here, different sizes. That's what I use to cut my holes and everything. And you could cut the top and bottom out with a hole saw choose the right size. If you use these you have to have safety glasses and long pants and the whole get up to keep all the shavings off. It creates a lot of shavings and they're sharp and they stick in you. So I just prefer to use the this method. It's a little probably a little slower but I had enough hole sawing with all the other holes so uh, I just wanted to show you that. Okay, a couple things I just wanted to talk about while I'm cutting out cans. There's going to be a little bit of planning involved in this, and maybe even some more research besides my videos. I've actually done a lot of research myself. Uh, you're going to have to determine how long you want it, how wide. As I always say, the bigger the better. This, this thing's not going to heat your whole house. This thing may only heat one room. But, all that depends on how well you insulate it and the, how well you build it. I, I already had this glass. The glass is the hardest thing to find. I actually looked around, I had this glass sitting on the porch for a couple of years and had forgotten about it. So I was looking around, my neighbor over there has another piece, I might build another heater out of if this works. But the habitat stores, if you have one of those where you live, or we have one, or any building supply, especially if it's like a a recycle building supply. They have large panes of glass that are fairly cheap. If you go try to buy a new piece, it's not going to be cheap. So the idea is always cheap, free. It's about saving money. So I've had this piece for a while. You have to do a lot of. I don't have to draw out designs because I just keep them in my head. I already know how this is going to look when it's done and and what I want to do from here with it. I don't have everything I need yet. I need I still need the dryer duct duct work, the dryer vent, hose. And I need to make a piece that goes through the window of the house to connect those two dryer vent hoses too. So like I said, you gotta have a little bit of planning and know what you're going for. But research is the key and a whole lot of common sense. So I've got about two more rows of cans I gotta cut out and paint. And then I'll show you all how this thing goes together. And this is the shed I built. just recently for that okay one more thing I want to touch on 
real quick before we move on is my measurements. I'm using a piece of glass that I already had, so I'm going with that. Um, like I said, glass is the hardest thing to find, so maybe that should be what you find and go off of. In this case, my box itself is going to be 34 by 76. And then with my access on the sides for the ductwork, all together it's 41 inches wide. So a 4x8 sheet of plywood and a 4x8 sheet of the styrofoam with foil on one side cut down to the sizes you need will be perfect. If you could make everything 4x8 you'll use more cans. I en ended up using 117 cans by the time I'm done. So I just wanted to go over that with you, give you an idea how many cans you might need and the size. Some guys have built much smaller ones but that won't heat a whole big area. I wanted to go ahead and go all out and go big, as big as I could so I could heat as much area as possible. So, um, go big or stay home. On to the next step. Okay, in this clip I want to talk about a couple other things while I'm doing some gluing here a whole lot of glue as you can see after these three rows I have three more left to cut but like I said earlier you gotta switch around a little bit so you don't get too bored with one thing now you'll notice I have my can flavors mixed up a little bit. I found out in my first three rows that not all cans are created equal. One of my rows is a little shorter because I didn't mix it up like I did the others. I don't know if it has something to do with it. You check them out and they all look kind of the same, but there's a little bit of a difference. So, just mix them up a little bit or use all of one flavor. You'll also notice I have a gap between each row. That gap was there on purpose. I've seen a couple other designs where the cans were together, flat together all the way up. I think this design works better because there's heated air around the cans as plus the cans are absorbing heat themselves. kind of like the new windows. There's a there's two pieces of glass with airspace in between. Usually window companies put a gas in there, but in this case it's just it's just air. So the heated air around the cans plus the cans absorbing heat to me is a better design than laying them all flat together. You're only going to get one more row of cans once you squish all these together anyway. So I think it's better safe than sorry by going with a proven design with the air gap in between than it is to try to go with one more row of cans. Now that we filled the top of every can like that, it's 
See, that Coke can's not fitting in there very well. It may be because I goofed it up a little, or it may be because the cans aren't the same. The rest of these should go. last can don't need any on it. I screwed up put some on there but I'll use it then. Okay. So I'm gonna take these three rows out. Use a good straight edge, get them good and straight, and then go to the next row. 